What's up, everybody? It's the Brown Water Banter Podcast. I am Jared Seymour. I got Joey Cates here on the on the number three microphone, and we got Chris Fetters in the studio tonight from Seven Seas Marine. What's up, man? How you doing? Not much. How y'all been doing? Doing good, good. man. Uh, got a lot to talk about. Uh, I mean, I'm sure people have heard that name uh, if you if you're from Biloxi or the Gulf Coast, really. Period. You know, Seven Seas Marine. Been there for a while. Yeah, we hope so. At least. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Man, uh, Chris Fetters is a St. Martin graduate. We've known each other for a super long time. Stingham. Stingham. <laughs> yeah, yeah, jacket. Yeah. Um, but, man, I wanted to uh, talk about today for people that are watching, like, your story and how you got into the business. It's a family business. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, family business. And it was started by your? Great-grandpa. Okay, and when was that? How, like, how long? Oh, man, that was uh, around 1960. Jesus. He actually, you know, their business actually coming up was the trawl business, making trawls for all the shrimp boats and everything. And what ended up happening was guy owed him money and <laughs> traded him an outboard. And Grandpa fixed it, or great-grandpa fixed it up and yeah. sold it. And from that point, they just started doing a little bit here and there. And it just kind of started growing. And then my grandpa actually picked it up in, I think it was like 75, 79, somewhere in there. Okay. And renamed it to what it is now, Seven Seas Marine. Okay. It started off as Dale's Outboards. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't. Know. Anything killer. behind the name? Yeah. Uh, the, so the seven C's is actually you know C apostrophe S. So it's actually for my grandpa, my grandma, and then their five kids. Sweet. So that's where the seven C's comes in. That's, that's awesome. killer, man. Yeah. Um, you you didn't start out there though, right? You went to college. You did the thing. You you got a different job outside mm -hmm. the family business. So basically, how I got started was in high school. You know, wanting to wash a couple of boats, make a couple extra bucks during the summertime, uh -huh. and then I went to co Scott uh, College. Uh, Actually taught for two years. Yeah. Kind of like old Kate's over here. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> decided after two years that it, it just wasn't for me. Okay. Um, went back to what I knew best and just went back to Grandpa's and been there ever since. So, I mean, I'm working on probably around 20 years now. Good Lord. That's awesome. Man, we're getting old, dude. Yeah. Um, so, when, when you when you decided you was making that move out of being a teacher and educator and going back into the family business, did, did you already know how to work on boats, uh, uh, outboard motors pretty well at that point, or did you have, was there still a lot to learn when you went back into it full time? No, I mean, I pretty much had most of it covered. I mean, getting into, like, powerhead rebuilds and lower unit rebuilds, you know, I had to kind of learn that a little bit more. Um, but that's kind of where Grandpa just kind of threw me into it and said here here's a book like learn on the job take it apart thing. pretty much it. he basically threw a power head block right there and said all right there's the book he said call me if you need me and i was like really now was he trained in any way or he just trained he on, did cut his teeth on doing it pretty much it just doing it i yeah. mean he did do some schooling um they didn't really have the formal schooling that they have now i mean you hear of mmi tech and all that kind of stuff that you know i didn't go to that any of the other guys that work in there didn't have that either uh we basically go to yamaha training once a year Okay. Um, does that give you like a certification or does it, it Yamaha does. says, yeah, they, they yeah, know our it, stuff? It gives you a certification and then it gives you a certification in each of the different fields, like the inline engines, V engines. Um, and then what you can do is work your way up to where they have master techs. Okay. And there's not very many in the States. Okay. Um, I think they said there's a like a 5% pass rating on wow. the test. So it's not an easy test. Pretty wow. difficult. What uh? So name me those the all the different uh, styles again. Uh, obviously, you got your out, basic outboard motor, right? Mm -hmm. And then what'd you say you had a sh inline? So in, like your inline is basically like what Joey has, four stroke, yeah. one fifty. It's okay. just an inline engine. Okay. Um, and then you have your V engines, which is like your three fifties, two fifties. It's okay. just a V block is the only difference. Okay. Do y'all do uh anything other than the outboard motor repair? Uh, we y'all do I mean, bigger. Do, we do trailer. Outboard. We don't do anything with inboards. In yeah. fact, then as far as outboards go, we only deal with Yamaha. Uh, okay. We don't do Suzuki or anything like that. Okay, is uh, in is your opinion? I mean, is there is Yam? I feel like that's what I've always used. Really, that every boat we've ever had was a Yamaha. I've had a couple other <laughs> others. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously you're a little biased. It's, cause it's hard to beat the little. On, but, <laughs> It yeah. fires right up. Yamaha always fires right up. I mean, I am biased. <laughs> Knock on yeah. wood. <laughs> but if you go to any boat show, you yeah. go to any uh, like the Boardwalk Marina. Yeah. If you take a look in there, I know. Look what's up there. Piles of Yamahas. I mean, that's that's the way I, I've actually sold motors before at boat shows. People are like, you know, why should I buy a Yamaha? I'm like, go, go count the other ones. <laughs> I'm like, in, in, in here right now, honey. Yeah, like, go, go count, count them. them. And, yeah. and they come back like, how much do you go. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying other engines are bad. Right. It's just we've had Yamaha since 84 when they came in the country. And, I mean, we still got a 1984, 25 horsepower. You push the button. Runs like up. a scalded dog. I mean, bro. water pumps, carburetor, and then changing oil. I mean, it, that's all it takes. And it, like I said, they'll keep running. What, uh, what did y'all ever work on anything besides Yamaha? Uh, well, before Yamaha came in, grandpa was working on McCullough's and Chrysler. Dang, that's old school. I had, my it, my grandfather old. had a Chrysler outboard on his John boat and it was like an eight point 
six or something like that. Yeah. Eight point eight, something like that. I mean, it, it was, was like five years ago. We were in an yeah. attic trying to clean up, and I pulled a box out. I'm like, Grandpa, what are you gonna do with this Chrysler parts? I'm like, We don't work on this. Anymore. <laughs> yeah, like, you, I don't even think they make them. Anymore. No, no, you just make the parts throw it away. Anymore. He's like, Put yeah. that back down, son. Yeah. You don't know. That's exactly <laughs> what he said. That. Yeah, yeah, you don't know. He said somebody that. will need it one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah they'll sure. come in a clutch for, <laughs> for uh, some situation. How long have y'all been down there at y'all's location in Bloxham? <sighs> Since they opened up in 1960. Jesus. In fact, they actually same location. same location. They actually started across the street in the back stall of the trawl shop. So, like, they're building nets right here, and then they got a couple little motors over there on the side. Just piddling with them, and then yeah. that just turned into a whole thing. Great-grandpa said, okay, that's in the way. Bought the house across the street, turned into a little shop, and then it's kind of just expanded on ever since. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty pretty big for where y'all are at right mm -hmm. there. Y'all have added on some some slots back there and stuff like that. We just added on another stall in the back, and then we just Y'all got a pile a of boats. Lots. We do. A pile of boats. And we still need more room, it seems like. <laughs> I, I mean, every time you talk to anybody about motor repair like that, it's like they say they just there's just an abundance of work always. Yeah. Is that right? I mean, it's it, it. We always a little slow down a little bit in the winter time, but it, this past couple of years we haven't. I mean, we haven't went pressure washing, cleaning, or anything yet. So we've been going pretty steady the entire year. What do y'all do besides the motor repairs? I know you sell boats, right? Yeah, you, we sell boats. Uh, we actually we sell the Yamahas, which we're one of the only two people on the coast that can do that. You know, just selling a loose engine like that. Um, okay. Everybody else has to sell them With as a, a package. Yeah. yeah. Package deals. That's cool. But as far as if you came in and said, "Hey, I need a new engine," we can put a new Yamaha on there. Is that a is that a Yamaha rule or is that a, okay? Yeah. It, it, it basically Yamaha has territories for their dealers. Gotcha. And okay, we are. We basically cover from the Alabama state line all the way to Bay St. Louis. They have a guy over there. Okay. Wow. I didn't realize that. And then what about on the new boats y'all sell? So the new boats we have, um, we've had G3 aluminum boats. We've had them the longest. We've had them probably since around 99, 2000, something like that. Uh, Nautic Stars are, I guess you call our flagship. Okay. I mean, that's what we do our best with. Um, bay boats, offshore. Where are they boats. made? They are made in Amory, Mississippi. Yeah, what I thought. Mississippi boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That that helps out too. You tell yeah. somebody they're buying a boat from Mississippi and oh, yeah. throw a sport trail trailer on it from Bay St. Louis and they just have a foreign Yamaha, but they still love everybody them. else's <laughs> hometown. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, you know, what is there any motors made in the, uh, the United States? This all of them are probably would imagine are foreign. Johnson, 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 Johnson maybe Johnson yeah. Avenue used to. I'm yeah. I'm not sure on that anymore. Yeah. Um, and then we've actually picked up two boat lines this past couple of, this past year. Okay. Uh, Avid boats, which is a new aluminum boat line. They were actually started by the former president of Nautic Star, his son. So his son was brought up in the Nautic Star business, ended up venturing out on his own and doing Avid boats, which are built in Amory, Mississippi. Okay. And Is that the same Avid fish gear? Totally different. Totally different. Okay. So right. they are basically what they're doing is they're building aluminum boats that don't look like aluminum boats. I mean, they look if you look at them from afar, they look like a fiberglass boat. And you, and you got some of those in uh... – out of your place now? Yeah, we've got actually we've got two of their uh, their twenty one bays. Okay, and they just came out with their bass boat and their twenty three bay, and we'll have both of those at the boat show here in a couple of weeks. Well, uh, you brought that up. So uh, yeah. we saw y'all last year there. Joey and I were there walking around and checking out everything. And that the the one this year is coming up. What not this weekend, but the following weekend, first weekend of seventh. February, right? Not this weekend, next week, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Seventh, I believe it's nine. February seventh, eighth, ninth. Because depending on when this airs, yeah, people Friday, will Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, which we actually get started this week. Start getting them clean. Well, how and, crazy is all that, man? How, what's the preparation like? What do y'all? What all you got to do? Cause y'all got to bring all those. How many down trucks there, you huh? got to have? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're, uh, I think we're bringing twenty six boats this year. Jesus, wow! Which means you have to wash twenty six boats before you leave the shop. When you get down there, you move them in, you stage them, and then you have to wipe them down. Yeah, wash yeah. them out. Yeah, it's a full. It's a full week's work. I mean, yeah. we're gonna be we're gonna start washing probably Thursday, Friday, weather permitting. Right. We'll finish up on Monday. Uh, haul boats Tuesday. I mean, we move in on Tuesday afternoon this year, which is a day earlier than normal. That's good. And That's then we'll, good. Then we'll spend Wednesday and Thursday down there polishing. That's great. Getting stuff we didn't get, setting up signs, yeah. plants, making it look you know like it does when you come down there and it's all decked out the, yeah. the turnout last year when we were there seemed like it was pretty was good what, what's, what's your take on it was it last year the turnout seemed like it was pretty steady about what's normal um okay but it was a more serious um uh, serious turnout as far as the people that were there they were looking for something i mean they weren't right. just checking it out gotcha because normally we get a lot of people, shoppers yeah, yeah. Normally we get a lot of people just kicking tires stuff like that but yeah. last year it seemed like they were more serious about it and they were more informed too which makes a big difference really yeah mm -hmm. everybody's doing their homework before they go down there yeah the more homework you can do i mean because there's so many different boats out there and if you get to that boat show they're just all over the place right. so if you have some kind of view of what you want 
and then from that point there, it's just narrowing it down. What do you like about the Nautic Star other than the fact that it's built in Mississippi? I mean, they're all composite. Um, I mean, I actually own one myself, so I mean, I'm not yeah. going to buy something yeah. that's, that we're doing. They say that 22 Bay is 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 bulletproof. Uh, a the 22 is a real good one. Yeah. Um, we actually have the DMRs running four of our 22 Bays okay. uh, for patrol boats, so watch out for them if they're on. They're the ones that we <laughs> yeah. If you Watch see out for those guys, guys. make yeah. sure it ain't them. Yeah. Uh, we actually, I think, was looking at the hybrid last year. Don't they have a hybrid that we were yeah. walking they around? They do with have a those? hybrid. Um, in fact, I have a 23 hybrid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it basically, it's a half deck boat, half bay boat. It's that perfect compromise boat. You right. Know, if you want a bay boat to go fishing, but your wife or significant other is like, look, sides. well, not the mm -hmm. size, but I want all the cushions so I can yeah, sit yeah, there yeah, and relax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the perfect uh, combination because if you're, they're not going with you, you take all the cushions out leave them at the house. Yeah. So, I mean, we that's probably our most popular boat here lately, that and the 21 Bay boat. Yeah. When when you talk when we talk about like uh, outboard motor uh, repair because that, that's what y'all you know the bulk of your business I'm sure is what what is, what's the problem that you see come in the most that I mean I'm sure you get your wear and tear right but like what's what's the main thing that comes through y'all's doors you think if there is one uh, people park them in September when the summer's over with and they pull them back <laughs> out in March and like I just don't understand why like, it's not Joey working over here yeah why it's not working right? yeah I got I a mean, job man yeah <laughs> I mean, trust me we all do and yeah. it's just the fuel nowadays is not what it used to be yeah. where you know yeah. 20, year, 20 years ago you could let set up for two years go out there and hit the key and it fires right up you think that's the biggest problem is the fuel that, that causes that the problem fuel is, with, with yeah. it sitting up? the fuel it, the fuel is varnishing up basically in the carburetors or in the fuel injection system and it just gums it up to where you just don't get the performance anymore is that with the ethanol gas only or are yeah. you saying that even no. when even goes, with the pure stuff that's with really both. now the ethanol gas is worse right. um the pure stuff it seems that it doesn't break down as quick um so i mean you might be able to get away with letting it sit all, all winter long and then run it the next year but if you got the ethanol gas more than likely it's, it's already turned yellow my like last boat it ate all the hoses up had yeah. to drain the tank yeah. all the filters everything your carbs everything so, see the bad thing with ethanol especially on the older boats is it's a stripping agent so you put in your gas tank whatever is built up on your gas tank yeah. over the years it, it just strips off. it right off yeah, and it goes straight it right into the in. filters damn and it's like pink sand well, at least it was in mine. Like, just I mean, just an inch full of pink sand in the bottom yeah, of my tank. It just tank. kind of depends on what's in your tank. It's it any kind of sludge, it just picks it all up. So, would you say to people out there listening? I mean, the number one of the most important things they can do is just keep running it. Run go it. out there and hook some bunny ears keep up to it. Keep running it. it. Um, we we recommend once a month for okay. ten minutes on the hose if you cannot get it in the water. Yeah. I mean, even that's not really getting it done. But at least it's circulating that fuel enough to where it's not just sitting there stale. Damn, I feel guilty. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> Don't I feel bad because hey, I I, mine's not. been sitting and up since uh, Labor Day weekend. I haven't right. run it. So. Right, Is there any difference like between a two stroke and a four stroke on that? Two stroke a little worse of letting sit, four stroke. So there's no, not, I don't think there's a difference between two stroke and four stroke, but the difference is the fuel injection to carburetors. Yeah. Okay. Because if you got a fuel injected two stroke, it's not so bad because that that fuel is contained in that in that in the VST tank. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the four stroke. If it's carbureted, it's always open to the atmosphere. Yeah. So it seems like if when it's open to the atmosphere, it really just kind of deteriorates even quicker. Do you have a personal preference on that? Between two stroke and four mm -hmm. stroke, I've got, tried to. Read I've got a one bit. of each. I mean, yeah. I've yeah. got a two stroke fifty that I love, um, and then I've got my four stroke one fifty, which is the most bulletproof motor they've got. Yeah. yeah so good thing for joey he's got one too yeah <laughs> what, would, what, what was you saying you need to get looked at your water pump i just had my i'm fixing to have a uh, 100 what is 100 hour service 100 hour service yeah, you should do the water pump and do all that stuff i got a shaft that's squeaking that feathers is going to take care of here yeah shortly. you got a dry drop shaft bushing that's yeah. just getting dry needs yeah. to be i think y'all changed out my water pump did mm -hmm. the lower unit put some uh re refilled the oil in it and all mm -hmm. that jazz yeah i mean that's going to be on the service changing oil and all that kind of stuff too the turnaround wasn't bad no, you know? um, our our rule of thumb that we'd like to keep is if you get it to us on Monday, we have you out by the weekend, unless we're having to order parts or anything right, like that. Yeah, and right. you know that's a summertime kind of thing. You know, right now you bring it in for service, we can get you in and out in a couple of days. Yeah. That's what I'm. So talking a lot about. of people don't realize that like right now is the time to get, yeah, take get it ready right for now. summer. Right? Between November and boat show weekend is the time you really want to get it out there. I yeah. mean, get it in there so we can get you taken care of. Because um, if you're waiting until April, you might be on a three to four week wait. They, there's a video on YouTube uh, where they someone took and cut the, the the lower unit open and showed you all the gears that work inside of that mm -hmm. thing. That was super Nuts. cool to see, yeah. man. Yeah, and see, that's one good thing about when you go up to, when we go up to class. Um, yeah. This past year, I went up for the new 425 class, and they actually had a lower unit made out of acrylic to where you could Dude. see everything inside of that's it. That's awesome. 
That's and, awesome. I mean, that was some of our lab that we had to do where we had to fill it up. We could see the oil going up into the, all the different passages and draining it. I and, thought it was cool. Like the drive shaft's always spinning, but mm -hmm. but the clutch moves the, the, the forward and reverse back yeah. and yep. forth. I didn't realize that, you know, and you see it, actually see it, and you can understand it a little bit better and understand what you're, you know, mm -hmm. what you're doing when you're using that, the throttle there at the dock and all. Uh, it was it was super cool. Um, what could you give people? We, we mentioned this a minute ago when we were talking before we started recording. If you could give people just a couple quick tips to like, you know, like we said earlier, preventative maintenance outside of running it, like you said, keeping clean gas. And is there anything else that that a basic kind of, you know, person that's just messing with their motor can do before they let something bad happen? You know what I mean? When you get done running that engine, flush it out with fresh water because that salt water can eat it up wonders. eat it up huh i mean i always tell people as soon as you get home hook up your flush out on the side if you got it turn it on by the time you're done cleaning your boat it's been 10 minutes i yeah. mean you've done flushed can you just out. leave you, you reckon just leave it idle yeah right no, no you don't even yeah. you don't even run yeah. it yeah on the new ones, on they the got new a, ones, flush they have a flush hose. out hose. Yeah. Ah, okay. See, on your older one, you yeah, got to crank it. And that's yeah. like my little 50. I've got to do the same thing. As soon as I get home, put my ears on it, yeah. crank it up, and just let it idle for five, ten minutes while I'm sitting there watching it. And that keeps all, like you said, the salt. But then I even remember reading something, too, like even if you're a freshwater brackish, it can yes. pick up sediments and deposits. So it don't have to just be salt water that you need to clean yeah. it for, well, right? See, your freshwater even has algae and stuff in it that can get in there and start creating an algae up. inside the heads, too. So, I yeah. mean, freshwater, salt water, it doesn't matter. We want you running, you know, hose water through it as soon as you get hunt, get in that's a good one yeah no take doubt. the time to put the preventative maintenance in and save you a little bit of money on the back end huh? yes it will definitely save them and save if you money. screw it all up just go see chris just bring it to, yeah, bring it to <laughs> i mean that's what we're here for right that's right that's no right doubt. that's no right doubt. that's how they uh that's how they do it uh is there anything we need to mention that i haven't brought up man that you know that you could tell everybody that's listening uh from y'all's point of view i mean right now is when they've got all the different rebates going on yeah um with the boat shows coming up I yeah mean, like yamaha has their extended two years of warranty free uh nautic star what's that cover that, that warranty is that really going to cover pretty much everything but neglect so i mean don't don't bring your motor <laughs> don't in up. Everything don't bring your motor in there if it's been sitting for six months and oh man now it doesn't run up well it's probably a fuel system but yeah. i mean yamaha is real good with their warranty yeah your trim motor goes out you bring it in we change it you walk out you don't have to pay a dime that's good um, oh, bastard motor I mean, it's trust me. Yeah. I had a I seal mean, blow on mine, but it's mine's old, so yeah. it's, that's yeah. just gonna happen. I, I mean, even seals at certain point in the warranty is gonna cover it. Right. So I mean, they cover some stuff that you know really. I mean, I, I wouldn't say they're really warrantable items, but yeah. I mean, Yamaha's real good about taking care of the customer on those ends. Yeah, that may be why you see them on the back of all those boats yeah. too, right? Yeah, that and the dependability. Yeah, it's nice when you can just turn a key and get in and go absolutely um people that are listening man y'all go check out the boat show we said it was a uh, six seven february six seven eight seven eight yeah. nine seven eight seven, nine eight, okay nine. february yeah. seven eight nine Probably that's Saturday, at the Sunday. uh convention center at the mm -hmm. coliseum right here in biloxi um they got all kind of stuff set up out there right boats they got uh vendors i know there's a lot of like Fishing. apparel companies yeah there's apparel company dog show i say the dog <laughs> show that's my little girl is asking about that gonna be a dog yeah. show I'm like, kids they do kids show. fishing turn they go do all kinds of stuff yeah. over there i know yeah. a couple years ago they had kayak and lessons yeah. and stuff i don't know if they, they didn't have it yeah. last year but. uh captain ronnie daniels that let us use his yes. uh yeah. table last yeah. year he's actually the one that does the uh kids casting where they bring all those okay uh rod and reels and mm -hmm. the kids do it it's a cool it's a cool thing we got we got to get him in here too we yeah, talked to him cool guy. About last it, yeah. year they gave away rods and reels yeah that's the same thing uh, that's year. Year. i think yeah. so yeah yeah because i got two sitting in the boat right now that haven't been used <laughs> <laughs> nice do you get to fish much or are you always just working on motors <laughs> six days a week i mean that's, yeah sundays are really the only day off and a boat just doesn't look too good. I was going to say, Sunday I wonder afternoon. if it just makes sense. Is that y'all's hours? Monday, yeah, Monday, Monday, through through, Monday through Saturday. Uh, Monday through Friday is regular hours, 8 30, 5 30. Um, Saturdays, we knock off right now at 12. Once we start picking up, we'll start closing up at one or two. Okay. And people want to get in touch with you. Y'all are on Facebook, right? We're on Facebook. Yep. We're on the website. Um, call, obviously. Call is the best way. Old to do school, it. old yeah. school telephone. I mean, pick it grand, up. Grandpa was old school. I mean, we still do written tickets. I mean, yeah. Then, yeah. Like yeah. I said, yeah. it took a long time to get a uh, website. <laughs> with him and then once, then once he saw how good it was he's like what the hell's yeah. the internet he's That's like right. he's like uh did you update the website i'm like he's no, like no i'm back here working he goes well go update the website yeah yeah I'll what get you catch with an internet yeah <laughs> internet like yeah. a cast net yeah right oh he loved those yellow pages yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i got one the other day i got a phone book the other day out. and i was like what in god's name yeah. is this oh they sent them out yeah so. I don't need it. I don't. I don't. I don't even, my grandma is the only person I know with a landline. I think. Yeah, it, they're few <laughs> and far between. I just got rid of mine. So. Yeah. 
Well, folks that are listening, man, y'all go check them out. Uh, hit call Chris uh, Seven Seas Marine down in Biloxi if you have any issues with uh, with your motor. He'll take care of you for sure. Get a good quick turnaround. Get you back on the water. Get you fishing or drinking beer or whatever it is that you do. Huh? Whatever you yeah. like to do on the water. I hear it's that. Uh, Chris, thanks for stopping by, man, and thanks again everybody for listening. Until the next one. That was a pleasure being here.